like that. Now, actually, the number of people who have actually lost their home, whilst it is a tragedy for those who have, is far smaller uh, in terms of a percentage of the number of people with mortgages than it was in the 1990s. And the other thing is that there's about half a million people um, who are still in work now because of the positive actions we took that otherwise wouldn't have been if we just had that sort of lead, leading to get on with it. If you're a first-time buyer, Rob, if yep. you're a first-time buyer and you're Absolutely. going into your high street bank tomorrow, yep. you're going to be faced with an interest rate of around about 6% yep. on a base rate of 0.5%. You're absolutely right. And what's happening is that the banks are trying to rebuild their, their balance sheets. They're trying to, to strengthen their situation so that they are um, not going to face the same sort of fragility and indeed strengthen their credit rating around the world. Because, of course, if the bank themselves is borrowing money from other banks around the world, they're going to have to pay more for the money that they are borrowing because they've got a poor credit rating. And the only way they can address that is to strengthen their balance sheets. I mean, you're a businessman, you know all this sort of uh, the, the way of these, these things work. So you're going to have the situation where the banks, yet yeah, will be making profits hand over fist to, to re-strengthen themselves. We have to make sure that, one, any profits that they're making, like, for example, the, the, the windfall that we're having on the bonuses, but any profits they're making are properly taxed so that we bring that money back into the exchequer. But we also need to make sure that once the banks are are recapitalized and, and are at a position where they are strong again in the world economy, that we then put the checks and balances in place to make sure they can't make obscene profits out of out of everyday folk. The other thing we need to do uh, with the banks, of course, is to make sure that that regulatory system is strong, is making sure that they're not making money on things they don't understand, is that they're properly disclosing how they're going about their business. Um, but the final thing I would say is if we'd have done what was being said to us by the benches opposite and sat back and just let the banks get on with it, if we'd have allowed the economic system in our country to collapse, which is what would have resulted if we hadn't stepped in and bailed them out, then you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation here now because if you think about it, everything we do in our lives now, in some way or another, we're involved the banking system. Whether it's paying our bills, uh, whether it's uh, getting our wages, whatever, it is all happening through the banking system. And if that wasn't there then you know, we would be in a heck of a mess and um, you know, trying to sort of rebuild that for absolutely nothing would be you know, a generational problem. So we had no choice. We had to step in and hold the banking system up. We could not allow it to fail because if we'd have done so, everything would have fallen over in this country and possibly even wider than that. Well, back to stoke on trend. Mm. Um, election campaign it started hasn't it there's yeah. candidates with a hat in the ring we know that Dr Allen's going to be fighting it for the Lib Dems mm -hmm. and so on has the election even started for you now it started some months ago uh, I mean you know, we've been out leafleting we've been out knocking doors we've been on the ground talking to people for months now um, and indeed it's really an extension of what I've tried to do as a member of parliament anyway because I think as a member of parliament you've got to be out on the doorsteps talking to people you've got to be finding out what people's concerns are what their worries are uh, I get to knock on a lot of doors and where people sort of say to me, you know, good grief, what are you doing here? We've never seen you before on our doorstep. How come you're talking to us now? And I have to then explain to them, well, with 37,000 houses in my constituency uh, and only sort of two days a week that I'm in Stoke-on-Trent, three days a week I'm in Stoke-on-Trent, it's not easy to get around. But it is important, and I have been talking to, it might not be talking to them, I've been talking to their neighbours either next door or in the next street uh, or indeed uh, in the next part of the constituency. Um, but it is important to get on the doorsteps talking to people, and that's what I've been doing for five years now. That just kind of gets ramped up a little bit with some leafleting as well. What sort of reaction are you getting because you've gone through mm. MPs expenses, yep. the recession? It couldn't have been a worse 12 months, no matter you know whose party yep. you stand for. Absolutely. It's been a torrid time for being an MP. What sort of reaction have you been getting? Um, mixed. Everything from really quite aggressive on the doorstep through to people who who sort of say, well, actually, Rob, we know you weren't caught up in, in a lot of those things and, and um, you know, um, and, and a much more gentle approach. But actually, whatever the reaction on the doorstep, the important thing is I'm on the doorstep. And if somebody has something, you know, that they really want to have a go at me about, fine. They should have that opportunity to do it. And that's why, you know, things like coffee mornings and things like that, I've always tried to make myself available to people. So if they want to come and, uh, uh, and have a shout at me or just a quiet and gentle conversation, I'm there to them to do so. Um, because I think it's, that's fundamental, really, to being a Member of Parliament. You've got to be listening to what people have to say. Well, out of the three Stoke-on-Trent constituencies, I think Stoke-on-Trent South has been labelled with the most sort of organised, if you like. Your election campaigns are always well organised. Mm -hmm. A lot of telephone conversation, a lot of use of the internet, getting on doorsteps. 
you know, has this even started earlier for, for an organised group like yourselves? Because it seems to me, I don't think I've ever known a general election where candidates are hitting the floor running so quickly. Yeah. Um, I think you're right in terms of the candidates getting out there. But, but as I say, for me, it's kind of an extension of, of what I do, who I am. Um, I've always thought that if you didn't, you know, if you didn't really want to go out and talk to people, you shouldn't be a member of parliament anyway. And, and you know, it's one of the best bits of the job is getting out there on the doorsteps, talking to folk. And that's what I've tried to do throughout the five years. Are other candidates now getting out and doing that? Well, absolutely. But you kind of think, well, if you're that interested, why weren't you doing this two or three years ago and getting out and talking to people? But I'll leave that thought hanging. Right. Two last questions. Are we going to see Rob Flello as the MP for Stoke South at the next election? And will there still be a Labour, go Labour government? Um, as to whether Rob Flello is still the Member of Parliament, that's up to the electorate. If they, if they like what I've done, the way I've done things, if they want to see more of it and give me the chance to improve on what I've tried to achieve already in the first five years, and I'd like to think I've hit the ground running and, and achieved quite a few things in those five years and certainly stood up for Stoke-on-Trent at every opportunity. If people want to see more of that, then they can do it through the ballot box. If they don't, then obviously I shall be uh, you know, looking for alternative employment. I may be coming to you for a, for a job before too long. Um, but I hope people give me the opportunity really to build on what I've tried to achieve in the first five years. Um, it's always hard in any sort of situation, whether it's setting up a business, whether it's in a new job, to try and you know, get yourself really um, uh, in, in control of everything that, that you need to and get your handle on everything try to do that. There's some areas that I still need to put more work into and what I would like is another five years to really get to grips with some of the really entrenched issues that I've just been able to, to start on really now. Um, in terms of a Labour government, well again uh, ultimately it's up to, to what happens in perhaps some of the marginal seats around the country as to whether there's a Labour government returned. Um, I would just say to people look back at history. Um, history does repeat itself what we've achieved in 12 years, we've got, look around Stoke and Trent, we've got sure start centres, we've got a brand new hospital, the first in 140 years, we've got um, uh, new health centres, we've got new schools, we've got new road networks. Everywhere you look there is an improvement um, in terms of you know, policing. The police have got powers in their toolbox that they could only dream of prior to 97. You contrast that to the 20 years of Conservative rule before it when we had the mines closed, we had no investment, we had you know, schools that were crumbling around people's ears, we had uh, a hospital that wasn't fit for purpose. People can make that contrast and need to make their decision based on things like that as to whether we have a Labour government or a Conservative government.